Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having an amazing day so far. I'm Noah's Phil and today's video we're gonna check out what might be possibly the most flexible overdrive I have come across so far and that is the Electric Eye Audio Mud Killer. Let's roll that intro clip and then get straight into some riffing. All right, before we get into the riffing, this is what the amp sounds like without the boost and gauge right now. It has a lot of saturation, but it is a little bit muffled in the low end. And if I now go ahead and engage the pedal, this is what it sounds like. That's an awesome, awesome tone. Again, everybody, welcome to today's video. We're gonna check out the Electric Eye Audio Mud Killer. I recently fell back in love with this pedal. I got this pedal, I think, like something around a year ago, but it didn't gel too much with me unless I kind of really gave it the time to really work out. I was often shortly before selling this pedal and I'm so glad that I stick to it. Lesson for you guys out there, if you sometimes don't gel with a piece of gear, just hold on to it for a little moment if you can, and maybe it's gonna have its gold moment. This certainly is having its gold moment right now at the moment. I'm having so much fun pushing it through my Bugera 6262 or also my Bugera 1990, which is up there on the shelf. Let me first explain the layout of the pedal, all the bells and whistles which come with this pedal before we then dive into uh, different ways to boost high gain amplifiers, because this is what we do over here on the channel. Now, this over here is basically something very familiar to a Tube Screamer variant. It's not that much different. It does have a little bit of a different voicing, but it has a very similar pedal layout and it does a very similar thing. Now, from a knob layout perspective, we have the tone knob over here, which is basically your high frequencies, how much you're boosting them. Then you got your normal post gain, which is something very similar to volume or the balance knob, I think it's called on the Maxon OD808. Then we've got the pre-gain, which is your normal drive. And the uh, major perk of this pedal is the fat skinny um, knob or the mud control rather, which you can set from either fat to either skinny. And this allows you to control the low end and this makes it super, super flexible for any kind of, let's say use case scenario depending on what amplifier you have, like especially more boomy amps are gonna absolutely profit and benefit from this pedal over here. Then we also have three different switches where you can set up either the clipping mode, I think this is normal LEDs, and if you put it over there, you've got diodes, or which are a little bit harsher, or vice versa, could be mistaken. I gotta check the manual on this again. But however, left is the more softer clipping mode, and right, you got a more harsh and more tighter um, clipping mode going on. Next up, we got this very top off on thing over here. This turns off or on the pre-gain. So if you got it to the right side, then you're actually having engaged the pre-gain knob. Just gonna pump this up. You can hear, you know, the noise floor being raised when I set the pre-gain. And let me put it back again high and then turn off the pre-gain. Then you're gonna hear what I mean. So now it's super high, turning it off, you have completely disengaged the pre-gain over here. We're gonna, we're gonna see what that looks like and how we're gonna utilize it, because this is, for me personally, one of the core features of this pedal which makes it so unbelievably useful. And not, last but not least, we have this close open thing where you got the, I think it's called amp switch. Now the lighting is a little bit uh, itchy over here, hard to read. Okay, uh, yeah, the amp switch, it is. What this allows for, if you have an amplifier, which you can simply plug in like a, like a switch, not like a tap button or something where you're switching the channels, you can actually put that in here into the pedal and this will allow you, for example, 
to have like a full high gain tone where you're playing with the mod killer, you're boosting your high gain tone, and then as soon as you are engaging the uh, mod killer off, you're actually also switching the channel on your amplifier. This is a really cool thought out feature. I unfortunately don't have any amplifier which does channel switching that way. All of my Bugera amps, they have that very delicate special circuitry for amp switching. Not gonna dive into that one, but I cannot demonstrate this particular function over here. Now, what I can, however, uh, demonstrate is how amazing it sounds. Again, let me play without the mud killer so that you hear what the amp is set to right now. Oh, by the way, I'm using my uh, Phoenix ST30 with a Seymour uh, Duncan SH5 in the bridge position, and I'm going into my Bugero 6262 amplifier. I'm gonna read off the, um, the settings over here, but I'm also gonna have a picture over here in uh, the video. So volume is set to close before five. I got treble set to four and a half, mid is set to pretty much five, and bass is set to seven and the gain is set to actually also seven, so on the lead channel. So we're actually pushing this gain, this amplifier into a very high gain territory where you usually would not use it. So normally you have the gain set to three and then you boost it with a tube screamer. That's kind of the generic setting which everybody got out there. Um, yeah, but this is so cool because this thins out the amplifier in that very specific frequency range um, with the pre-gain turned off, as you can see, this totally makes this a full chugging mach metal machine. Okay. Okay, gonna dial back the tone. So just that we can see what the range is. So there's a big range where you can set this tone. I like to have it pretty high and usually uh, in discussions with buddies and people out there on the internet I find out that I really like to crank those tone knobs a lot where other people like to have them a little bit more down. Um, yeah, next up we got the mutt control which is one of the core features of this pedal over here. <laughs> So in this particular setting, it's quite subtle, but it does the thing, you know, it thins out the amp a little bit. <clears throat> this becomes more apparent when we set the pre-gain on. Currently we have it turned off. So whatever I do on this knob, this is taken out of the equation. It's not boosting the signal in any shape or form. Only the, um, you know, only the clipping gets a little bit, in, comes a little bit into effect. But over here, the post gain, this is where I can dial in the respective volume boost. Now, these are my preferred settings with this particular setup on the pedal. I really, really, really love the fact how this kind of tightens up the already super saturated 6262. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take back the gain. I'm gonna compensate a little bit in the trebles and in the EQ, So, but not that much. It's always kind of around one or 1 1.5 points away from what I got right now. And yeah, let me do that quick. All right, what I've now done is I've set the gain to two out of 10. I have taken the mid one point down, so it's now at four, 
and I got the treble now set to 5.5. Everything else is the same. This is what the amp sounds like without any boost. Way less saturated. Now I'm gonna first turn on the Mutt Killer with the exact settings which I had before. And you already can hear, this is kind of all underwhelming to be honest. Now um, this is simply not the right setting for this particular setting on my amplifier. What I wanna do is, I wanna first engage the pre-gain so that this boost section comes into play. Um, I'm gonna leave the compression at the, um, I think it's the LED clipping. And what I like to do is, I first tend to take away a little bit of the mud control and then dial into taste. And on the post gain, I do the typical tube screamer thing, push that up, and on the tone, I back that off a little bit because now I got, you know, like the more uh, pronounced harsh frequencies of this pedal getting through. Let's turn it back off. All right, now I could get a little bit more funky and go ahead and yeah, let's crank the let's crank the tone a little bit. Let's set the compression on so that we get that harsher frequency or yeah, let me try that first. <laughs> It's sounding now a little bit harder, you know, like those, those chugs, they are a little bit more clankier, but not really annoying yet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go full scale in mud control all the way, taking out all the low end. <laughs> Now this is quite extreme, especially on a 5150 style amplifier. You don't want to go that high, to be honest. I like it really at the section over here where I'm taking a little bit out of the low end, but still leaving a little bit. Let me go for comparison's sake, totally down below. <laughs> This is an awesome pedal so far. What I want to do is I want to test one other amplifier because the 6262 is anyways pretty tight. I want to show it on my Bugera 1990, which is a JCM 900 copy. It's a little bit more woofy, a little bit more boomy. And here we can again showcase the strength of this pedal quite good. Let me go ahead, do some cabling. I'll be right back. All right, I'm now back. I got the Bugera 1990 engaged. Um, one thing about the JCM 900s and the Bugera 1990 also, the JCM 900 has a strange sort of boominess to it. It does not really have a lot of percussive low end, but it's all just flat out, you know, like it's just flubbing out. This is what it sounds like straight out of the box, a tone which I would never use. <laughs> Okay, but using the mud killer again, with the pregain set off, with the compression turned on the lighter side, with the mud control set quite tight, gain is pretty much up to maximum. Let's put that up to maximum for demonstration sakes. 
tone as well. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> All right, let's play a little bit around with the mutt control. Right, uh, this uh, mud control feature especially becomes prominent in this range over here. I really like it when it actually takes a lot away of the low end on the uh, Bugera 1990 because that's all kind of not really useful low end to be honest. Uh, I could rather use that in post production and bump a little bit the you know the lower frequencies, but this is already really good sounding. <laughs> Okay, going to go up to the Bugera, I'm gonna tame down the gain a little bit so that we can use this with the pre-gain turned on. Just for experimentation's sake, I took now out a lot of the gain on the Bugera 1990, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> And again, the test with the settings unchanged on the Mutt Killer. You again can hear this sounds super strange. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dial back the Mutt Control a little bit. We're gonna engage the pre-gain and we're gonna straight away go for the harder compression over here. In this setting, I actually would dial back the tone a little bit and maybe even let allow a little bit more of that fat to get through and then just try to engage a little bit of the pre-gain over here. You can get a lot of the gain out of the pedal actually. Let's just totally exaggerate. To be honest, I'm not a fan of, you know, cranking out the gain. I don't like the gain structure, which it inherently brings as soon as you turn up the pre-gain, but I really, really, really dig how the pedal sounds as a boost, tightening up the amplifier. And I would assume this is also what it's there for. It's kind of what it's made for. <laughs> on this particular setup with the Bugera, I like the compression on the smoother side. I'm gonna crank this a little bit and then crank that a little bit. <laughs> This is an incredible pedal. I'm gonna play a few riffs again and then we're gonna call it a day for this video. <laughs> All 
All right, let's call it a day for today. Let's get to the conclusion. What's my conclusion? What's my verdict on this pedal? This is super flexible. I really love the tone which you're getting out of this, especially when turning off the pregain. I'm actually just using kind of the tone shaping abilities of this uh, pedal over here. Yeah, I, as I said before, I really did not gel with this pedal. I was short before selling it. Glad I hung on to it. I think these go for around $180 in the US. And if you buy them at Europe, you're kind of due to taxes somewhere around 220 to 200. 50 euros. However, this is an absolute cool boutique pedal over here. Absolutely worth the money if you are after this tone, actually. Um, there are a lot of alternatives out there, you know, the Lichtlärm, uh, Lichtlärm Audio um, King in Yellow, which I'm gonna try in a bit, is a Heter and uh, a lot of other pedals out there. But I think this can, you know, this lives up to its own. It had its own hype and absolutely justified. Really like this one. The Electric Eye Audio Mud Killer Pedal. Yeah, go grab one if you have the chance to. That's it for this video. This was, I think, my first pedal video, actually. Um, let me know if you like the format. Let me know if you um, have some suggestions, how I can up my game. Uh, did I do any crucial mistakes on this? Because, you know, eager to learn, eager to make better content every time. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you liked what you saw, then, yeah, hit that like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. Yeah, go grab one of these awesome pieces of equipment and see you in the next video. Until then, stay metal.